Dan, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, congratulations on the, de uh, the directorial debut. Thank you, buddy. It's great. Of course. Uh, I would love to. I mean, you've been doing VFX work. You've been doing second unit direction with Marvel for a while now. I'd love to hear about how it feels, what it was like to get behind the camera on Loki and call the shots. It was great. You know, it was something that I always wanted to do. And it was something that I was very fortunate to work with the Russos. They were always really open to ideas and collaboration, you know, just by the very nature of those films being so big. And so it was something that, you know, they gave me the, you know, the ability to like, you know, we're like, hey, go shoot that, you know, go shoot that. And then it's like end game. It's like, Joe's like, well, do the additional photography. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, so it's like, you got, you got the experience with that. And, you know, and then branch in the second unit directing and the experience with that. But it was something that I always kind of, you know, I always kind of approach visual effects from a story point of view. If, you know, if there wasn't telling a story, if it wasn't, servicing the story then it didn't really whatever we were designing in a, in a fight sequence or a battle just didn't necessarily be there unless it was like too cool not to put in <laughs> but the uh <laughs> thing getting with loki was you know i had helped out with visual effects on season one and then same thing talked about story and then kevin wright the executive producer said hey how much do you want to come on i'm like yeah i want to come on and you know it was just an amazing experience you know tom hiddleston the executive producer and kevin wright the executive producers it made it open very collaborative environment. You know, we'd have big meetings with the writers and the actors and all the directors sitting there, all just brainstorming on the episodes. It was just, it was just a, I mean, it's the way I think a show should be done and I wouldn't really do it any other way. Man, I'm loving this show and I love how the audience is also loving this show. It's fun to have fun with this one. I actually want to go back to Endgame real quickly because you played a part in bringing that portal sequence to life. When you guys were crafting that and you were designing that, which is a design from Doctor Strange, which I'm not sure if you had a part in it at the time, but did you know how iconic of a cinematic moment that was going to become when you had everybody walking through these portals and you were crafting that moment? It was interesting because there was a lot of different ideas. It was, there was, there was a version of the cut that when the day that we had all the actors together and it was like this long panning shot across all the actors, it was the day, it was the day that everyone was there. And it was like this giant, you know, ex you know, expensive in the sense you had all the actors there, but it just didn't play as well as we wanted. And so it was something that, you know, I got with, with Previs and, and Jeff Ford, our editor, and we just said, you know, this is, we have to go with the portals and just, you know, you're picking who comes out when it was just something that, you know, for, I think for the, originally it was like, we were, we knew who survived and when they were coming back, but we needed to slow it down and give the audience a chance to welcome their heroes back. And so it was so interesting in terms of like, okay, who comes from Titan first? You know, okay, you get the Guardians and then you know Star-Lord's going to show up. And then, you know, just being in the theater that day, it's like starting, okay, we got to do Spider-Man last, you know, because, oh, Spider-Man. So <laughs> it was very much crafted to be emotional. And, and it was, I think it was amazing for all of us that opening weekend, how well the fans responded to it. Oh, that was the best theatrical experience ever. Did the did the work you guys did on bringing the portal to life, kind of having the actors as characters step through, step into the world, end up informing what you guys ended up doing with Loki for the time portals and how characters, is that a similar effect? A lot of the shows, you know, and of course, over my experience with it, you always try to figure out where the source of the technology or the science or the magic comes from. So it's like going back to Winter Soldier, like, you know, we had Tony's, tech and graphics and then okay then we designed shields graphics right and shields graphics weren't as sophisticated as tony's because he could do holograms so all of shields graphics were on glass that was the best they could do and so you know we, we always think about that so i think you know the the the, the science of the tva is, is different from what the magic dr strange is using so you're you're trying to give them you know again story you know it's 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 not it's an effect but it's story you know and what's what's the what's the story behind the magic or the tech and you know making people wonder about that and you talk about the different types of the effect because of magic versus science the tva and all that you another thing you have to probably consider when you're directing this episode of loki is the time periods and i thought it was really cool i felt like you changed the look not only of the sets and the costumes and the things when we were in the 70s when we were in the 80s versus when we we're in the tva but also it felt like maybe you used different film or different cameras or something to capture because they, they, everything had a different look, especially when we were in the, like the McDonald's section of this episode. Did you do anything differently with the camera work or with the, maybe it was just a color filter to make it look like a footage from that era? We definitely, as a something we put across the entire episode, we put film grain on it and you know, we shot. Yes, yeah, so I, I noticed that. I noticed that. Okay. And so that gave it, you know, not a patina per se, but it, it sat a lot of the the 
when you went back in different time periods, it helps seat that and make it made it more believable. I think the palette was incredibly important with McDonald's because you started getting into the more vibrant 80s colors and contrasting to the more muted colors in the 70s. And, you know, and then it was just having fun and designing, you know, the 70s getting, you know, finding a reason that the punks and the mods would be together, you know, finding just the right year of, you know, the mods kind of coming back, you know, a little bit with the with the jam and then Quadrophenia coming out a couple of years later. So you're, you're thinking about all that stuff. You know, it's the fun part of the puzzle, you know, putting that together. That's awesome. And in that McDonald's scene, X5 and Mobius have a great conversation. And Brad Wolf says that his movie is cinema, which is a word that I, on social media, people have a lot of fun with because of obviously Martin oh, Scorsese's yeah. comments yeah. about franchises and Marvel and what is or isn't cinema. I would love to hear about how, you know, it's a fun joke. I love that bit in this episode. How does that become part of the episode? Is that an acknowledgement of what everybody's talking about on social media? Is that just the conversation making its way into this series, which is a little bit meta in itself, too, already? In, in itself, you know, I love that it was an elevated thriller. It was, um, <laughs> it, that's what happens, you know, and all honestly, that's what happens. You know, the, we had where we needed to go in the script. We had to have, we had to know that Mobius figures out that Brad, why is Brad acting so jumpy? Uh, but we had Owen and, and uh, Raphael there that day, and we were shooting that scene last, and they had the entire day to play. And so they would come out throughout the day and run the scene for me and say, well, what do you think? And it's like, oh, this is great. You know, just have to make sure this gets to this and gets to that. And so we shot it, and it was pretty much planned out by the time we got there. But so we did, we, I had first take, I'm like, all right, let's do it straight. You know, let's do what we talked about. And then the second take, Let's amp it up. And then the third take, I was like, all right, go for it. And it was just Owen and Raphael just tag teaming off each other. And, you know, the, the cut that's in there now is, is with like one little trim is the two of them just running because we, we cross shot it. So we just had it all together. And then you have the, the part where Owen smacks Raphael in the arm. was It was great because Raphael didn't expect it at all. So he's just kind of like, and they were just in it. And then just the, the, the beauty of having two geniuses and two writers, you know, on your on your show. Oh, that's awesome. That Yeah, that, that sequence, all the all the character moments, the good character moments where, kids, where these characters are just sitting there talking. It really comes through. And I, I love that. I want to actually, I, I got to go back to one other project, one other Avengers project you worked on. Avengers Infinity War. You worked VFX on Avengers Infinity War, and there's a sequence in the trailer, a very famous sequence now, because it wasn't in the movie, where yeah. all the characters, including the Hulk, are running through Wakanda towards battle. And yeah. this is a joke we make all the time on our show, where we're like, oh, we're still waiting for the Hulk to show up in Infinity War. <laughs> I, I know sometimes the trailers back then were intended to mislead us, because everybody was trying to figure out what's going to happen in this movie. How did the Hulk end up in Wakanda in the trailer for Avengers Infinity War? Because some of that shot is in the movie. For sure. But, uh, it's... It's something that, you know, you know, there's there's stuff that misleads, which I generally haven't been a part of per se, but it, that one was like a giant spoiler, right? Because we didn't want to didn't want to give away um, Smart Hulk at that point. And so I think you, you've probably seen it where the there's the scene that we didn't put in where, you know, Hulk and Banner are arguing with each other inside the Hulkbuster and and then, uh, you know, what was originally going to happen is, you know, the Hulk was going to come out. But we didn't realize it was was uh Soren Hulk yet and it was an idea that I think Jeff Ford had on Ultron there was another scene that it didn't make it in but the idea was that you thought Tony went to go confront Ultron and really he had stuck Banner in the Iron Man armor and then Banner hulks out and starts you know wailing on on Ultron it was such an amazing idea it's like oh we got to put this in and so we used the same idea at the end of Infinity War but again it didn't both times it didn't help the story. So both times it came out and it was like, oh, it's like, we, it was such, it's such a great gag, but we really had to, didn't have a chance to get it in. So it was kind of the, that shot was caught, caught in the confluence between trying to get this really fun idea and also not having Nat, you know, Natasha have to go up to Hulk who just magically turned in, you know, turned into smart Hulk. And then meanwhile, Thanos is wiping everybody out. So it's all story. It's awesome to hear how these things come together and the changes along the way. Dan, it's an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Congratulations on a great episode of Loki and, and you know, the continued rise you're having there at Marvel. I can't wait to see what you do next. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you.